Hi, my name is Rickard, and in this video, I'm going to show you the new Content Aware Fill tool in Adobe Photoshop 2019. This is one of the larger upgrades. Um, I'll cover the others in different videos. But what I want to show you here is how to use the new tool, uh, what its strengths are, what its weaknesses are, what kind of images you want to use it on, and what kind of images uh, you'll want to use different tools for. So let's get started. All right, so first I'm going to show you simply how to use the tool. So first we're going to make a selection and we can make a selection using any of the selection tools. Um, in this case, let's just use the square marquee. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select around this window right here. What I wanna do is I wanna erase this window, um, but I want it to use the content to wear fill so it looks like this is just brick wall. So let's go to edit, content to wear fill, and right away you can see the problem that the tool would have had in the past, which is that you can see this pipe right here, and I don't want that. So now the first thing you're gonna notice with this new tool is that you have two a whole new dialog panels, similar to some of the other filters like um, Filter Gallery, Camera Raw, uh, Liquify, Vanishing Point, all these bring you into a whole nother dialog interface. So what you have here on the left is you have your selection, and the green represents what uh, what, inf what part of the image information is being used to fill in this. Um, here on the left you have a few tools. So the first tool here allows you to delete or add to the, uh, I guess you could say the sampling information area. Uh, the next tool down is your selection tool and that simply allows you to add or remove parts of your selection. So in this case, um, if I use the lasso tool and hold down option, I can minus some of my selection there if I want to, here for example. And finally you have your hand to move around and your magnifying glass. Now also these, of course, you can access through the regular shorts cut, shortcuts of the spacebar for the hand and the spacebar and command on a Mac or a spacebar control on a PC to access your zoom. All right, so now let's delve into this area here. So show sampling area. So that is the area that's being used to determine what to fill in here. So this green here is the sampling area. So you can turn that on or off. Um, obviously having it turned on is really the whole benefit of using this tool. You can also change, for example, if I'm doing a green image, um, having a green overlay is not gonna help. So you can change the color of your overlay here uh, to best suit your image. Um, the default is green and that'll work probably on 90% of all images that you're doing. Uh, you can also change the opacity. I believe the um, the default opacity is 50%. I actually moved it down to about 25% just because 50% kind of covers up too much of what I want to see. All right, then we have some fill settings. Now we're going to go into those with a few other images, but color adaption is how much of the color from the existing space is retained with the cover. So in this case, it's set on default, but if I put this on very high, what you'll notice is that this area here retains a lot more of the original color. Uh, you have rotation adaption, which we'll cover in one of our other images, and then you have scale and mirror, which will also cover in one of these other images. Finally, you have your output setting. And this allows you to uh, create the fill as a new layer onto the current layer or onto the current layer, but as a duplicate layer so that you retain your original. Uh, the default is new layer. So now what I want to do is I want to erase this pipe from our sampling information so that when this area here is being rebuilt, it's not using that pipe. So to do that, 
we're on this tool, which is the tool you'll be defaulted onto when you open up the dialog box. And you'll also notice that you're defaulted to the minus. Um, if you want to add to the sampling area, you can either click here to go on plus, or while you're on the minus, you can hold down option and that temporarily changes, uh, toggles the tool to the other one. So if I'm on plus and I hold option, it's going to put it to minus. And if I'm on minus and hold option, you can see it's toggling there to the other one. All right. So in this case, I want to be on minus. And what I want to do is simply just draw away this pipe. And all of a sudden you can see our clone is now getting the result I want. So now I can hit OK. And if I deselect, which is Command D, you'll see I now have a new layer with the content aware fill. And you can see with just that amount of added control, I can now get the result I was looking for without having to use some of the previous tools that I would have had to use, like the patch tool or uh, the healing brush or the clone stamp tool. So there you can see a great example of it in use. This is another example here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selection around her. Then I'm going to go to edit content aware fill. And you can see right away, it does a really good job. Now you can see there's a little hitch right here. In this case, I can turn the rotation adaption to low and see if that helps me at all. And as you can see, it does, but the problem is this and this are quite duplicative. So in that case, meaning you can tell that it's been cloned. So let's see what happens if I just erase this from my sampling information. And voila. And I want to erase that too, because again, we're getting that clone stamp effect. And there you go. Now we have quite a nice effect that looks quite realistic. I'm going to hit OK. And there you can see by having a little bit more control of our sampling area, we can use the clone stamp to do kind of auto erase uh, elements from our background. All right, next I want to show you this image. And in this image, I want to get rid of this bottom right rock here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a selection around it. And I'm going to go to edit content to where fill. Now this is where you can start playing with the rotation adaption quite a bit more. Now, right away, I'm actually getting quite a nice result. I probably would be okay with this without having to do anything else. Um, but let's say I wanted to get a little more rotation going on in here because we, we are seeing quite a few lines going in the same direction. So I can turn rotation adaption to high and we can see again, but we're getting those straight lines. Now, if we look at our image, we can see those straight lines are coming from right there. So let's go ahead and just delete that area and see what happens. Ah, there you go. You see, now that looks a little more natural. It looks a little bit more like these waves are flowing. So just doing that, just by having the ability to control what I'm seeing happen here, I can then go in here and adjust what I want or don't want in my sampling area. So let's hit OK. And that looks quite good. All right, next, I want to show you the mirror option. So here we have a quite symmetrical face. And what I want to do is I want to use Content Aware Fill to get rid of this flower. So let's go ahead and make a selection with our lasso tool. I want to make sure I also select the shadow that it's casting right there. That looks quite good. Let's go to Edit, Content Aware Fill. And you can see right there the problem we're having. So now let's turn Mirror on. And that's this option right here. I'm going to click that. And again. But in this case, I know that this is going to be my best sampling information. So what I can do is I can actually go here and um, the regular shortcuts for making your brush smaller or bigger work here, by the way. So I can use the bracket left and bracket right tools to 
change my brush size and I can also use control option and drag left and right. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything from the sampling information. Oh, it won't allow me to delete everything. So we'll just leave a little bit right there. And now we're going to go on the plus brush, make that brush a bit smaller. And what I want to do is I want to use all this information from over here and not the lips. So we'll hold option, get rid of the lips there, get rid of this down here. So we're just using this half of the cheek. And now also you can see we've gone quite a bit lighter here. So what I want to do is use the color adaption. I want to put that on very high. And there you go. Now we're starting to get the effect that we want. Now, if I were doing a composite and this was the primary part of my composite, I would do a bit more work to get this looking good. But if I'm doing something quick, let's say this is a, a video shot or a graphic in the background, uh, just, just by having the control there of what I want sampled, by turning on mirror, and by using color adaption, I've gotten rid of that flower quite nicely. And we're getting an effect that looks pretty natural. So let's hit OK there. So there you can see the before and the after. Next, I want to show you the rotation option. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to delete this window right here. So I'm going to go in here and let's go ahead and select the window. Actually, let's select all the way around to there. And let's go to Edit, Content Aware Fill. All right, now you can see the effect we're getting is not very nice. Now let's turn on rotation adaption. Let's start with low and see what kind of an effect we're getting there. Still not great, but as you can see, it's actually made it a little bit more parallel. So now let's put this on full. And all of a sudden you can see we're getting a very kind of smart um, AI aware solution to this problem here. Now, what I'd like to do is actually control a little bit more what's sampling here because we're getting this double arch thing here that isn't great. So let's put on the plus and let's paint one of these. And let's see what kind of an effect we're going to get there. And I'm going to minus some of this stuff up here. So we really don't need that. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my brush bigger and I'm going to kind of paint around a circle all around here. So it has all that information to draw from. You can see it kind of corrected the bottom there. And let's minus out this. And it straightened it out. It's still putting two there, probably because of the width of it. But even now, you can see, like, I mean, unless you knew where to look, that looks quite natural. Quite natural. So let's turn on scale as well, see if that gives us any benefit. So what scale does is it allows the sampled area to scale up a bit as needed to get a better fit. So you can see the difference there. It's subtle, but it does help. Let's zoom in just a little here so you can see the before and after a bit better. And let's also turn on mirror, see if that helps at all. Oh, mirror did not help. So quite a few of these things I found playing around with this quite a bit that you just have to toggle them on and off and see what kind of a result you're getting. But that looks pretty good. Let's hit OK. And you can see, I mean, that's something that was much harder to achieve before and really not something that you could do with just a few clicks as you can now. Okay, now I want to quickly discuss before we end off uh, where this tool doesn't work quite as well as you would expect. So in this image here, we have quite an obvious pattern and you would think deleting one of these characters here, one of these men, wouldn't be that hard of a task. 
But let me show you what happens when I try to do it. So there you go, I've selected him and we're gonna go to edit, content to where fill. And you can see the problem. But now let's do some adjustments in here. Essentially what I wanna do is just use wall, in, use wall information So I'm going to get rid of everything else but the wall. And let's see what kind of a uh, result we're getting. But as you can see, it's taking information from the ground and putting it up onto the wall. So it's not, it's not being very smart in terms of where it's pulling that information from. Now, if I delete the entire ground to try to just get that brick texture going there, well, you can see now it's bleeding that onto the ground. So in this case, because we're getting that contrast there between the light and the dark, I would turn color adaption to very high. Um, I'd probably turn some scale on, see if that helps. Turn mirroring on. And you can see all these are not getting a great result. So for something like this, uh, you're still going to be much better off using the patch tool. So if we go to the patch, we can actually just drag this to there, hold down shift, get some of those brick lines to line up, and voila, we have a much, a much better effect um, just as fast. So there are some cases still where the content aware fill may look intuitive, but the patch tool is actually going to be a better better option. This is another one that I thought the content aware fill would do a good job on, but no matter what settings I used, I really could not get it to do a nice job. Um, I'll, I'll do a quick demonstration here. So I've selected him and you would assume that it would pull some of this information here, but let me show you what happens when I do content aware fill. Um, because of the heavy perspective in the brick, you're getting this really strange effect. And obviously it's pulling information from the window, which we can resolve by uh, getting rid of that in the sampling area. But even so, you can see it's, it's almost doing like a patchwork of these textures rather than using some kind of perspective uh, algorithm to figure out how these bricks should actually be. So in something like this, you're going to be better off either, either using the vanishing point uh, clone tool or just doing it by hand by copying some of this information and using transform and stretch. So there you go. That's the new content to wear fill tool in Photoshop. It's one of the new additions to Adobe Photoshop 2019. Um, a great addition, a really easy way to cut things out of backgrounds. Not a perfect tool. You still will need to use the patch tool, um, some of the healing brush tools, and even the clone stamp tool for more intricate work. But in terms of something that you can use for just a few clicks to get rid of something from a background, um, it's really intuitive, really smart, and if you get used to um, using that sampling area and seeing the result in your other panel, you can really use it to do uh, some quick work in Photoshop. There you have it. If you like this video, please subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll try to have more videos out to you soon. <laughs>